Hi guys, this is Hafiz. On the wrist today, what I have is more than just a watch. What I have is what made history. Something that changed the way a luxury sports watch was considered to be like. Something truly classic, timeless, iconic and historic. What I have is what made people believe that craftsmanship and value of hand polishing and brushing on the standard steel is far superior and precious than the precious materials themselves. Something that defined luxury steel watch and created history of how far can human efforts extend to in an endeavor to display exceptional manufacturing even when the material used is just standard stainless steel. Something that made people believe that watches are more than a device that tells time and that it's not just the function that you seek from the watch, rather it's the form, it's the build, it's the manufacturing and the machining and then the details of human efforts in displaying how the finish of timepiece can let the eyes see the marvel. Something so revolutionary that it truly commenced the journey of watch collection. Something that created history and the beginning of time for luxury watches and will always be looked at when there's a talk about luxury steel sports watch until the end of time. Something mesmerizing, jaw-dropping and I truly mean it when I say breathtaking. Before I go any further, I have a confession to make. This is my first AP I have ever owned and I'm blown away with the craftsmanship and exceptional manufacturing. I have to admit that if this is what is called attention to detail, all the brushings and polishing that I have ever believed before as the finest and best in class now seem incorrect. This watch has changed my opinion to its entirety and I have to admit that my own opinion about how fine the extensive craftsmanship in the watches can be has changed now that I've seen and experienced this level of brushing and polishing and how seamlessly surfaces into play between them and can now compare my other watches with this Royal Oak side by side. Before I go further, I will also clarify that I only review the watches I own, so my comments more than on any brand are on my personal collection and even though all the watches are dear to me, I'll remain very unbiased on how I feel about my watches in the videos. I have worn this AP for a couple of weeks only to be able to assess it before I make the statement and now what I'll say is purely what I feel and believe in. Because of extremely rich history, the details on the watch that are not limited to dial only but extend all the way from the case to the bracelet and then the clasp. There's so much about this brand and the watch I want to say and share that I just can't fit all in one video without making it ridiculously long. So I decided to make this video in two parts. If you like what I share in this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you will know when I release the part two of this video in a couple of weeks time. Before I get into the watch itself, I will go back this time into the history of where it started from. It all started in early 1972 at the Basel, at that time called as Swiss Watch Show, when Audemars Piguet released their first steel watch with integrated bracelet design, something that was truly revolutionary and the most daring step in the history of watchmaking. Audemars Piguet started watchmaking in 1875 
when two young watchmakers, Julius Louis Odemars and Edward Auguste Piguet, joined hands to keep the tradition of watchmaking alive. Over the decades and centuries, Odemars Piguet have produced many famous luxury watches, especially from precious metals and gold, but none as iconic and popular as Royal Oak. The basis for the revolutionary and daring design for Royal Oak also has a very interesting story behind it. In early 1970s, with the release of Quartz watches by Seiko, the mechanical watch industry was shaken and most of the people started moving to a more accurate Quartz movement which was not only cheaper in price but also required lesser service and had lower to almost no service costs. These apparent benefits caused the customers to incline towards quartz and caused mechanical watch industry to start to die out and the market to crash as never before. It was this time when Audemars Piguet realized that they would need something revolutionary in design and timeless in the manufacturing to attract customers and prevent the company and mechanical watch industry from financial crisis. Working through the feedback that they received from Italian market about potential use of steel luxury watches, the management of manufacture decided that to prevent company from financial collapse, it was about time to introduce something completely new. Something entirely sporty yet classy and elegant but in the flesh that is so refined in manufacturing that no eye has seen ever before. Regardless of how supreme the manufacturing is, what matters in the end is how aesthetically pleasing the design is to not only attract and retain customers but also remain timeless even after decades and then the centuries have passed. The person chosen for this task was designer born in Geneva in 1931, Gerald Genta. That's when a day before Basel Fair in 1971, Audemars Piguet's managing director at that time, Georges Scolet, called Genta at 4 o'clock explaining that Italian market was expecting an unprecedented steel watch for which he needed the design by next morning from Genta. A stainless steel sports watch that is suitable for all occasions with the most beautiful finishing ever seen by human eye. By the morning, Gerald Genta had designed the watch that was going to be called Royal Oak. He will later state the Royal Oak as masterpiece of his career. Inspired by Diver's helmet, the revolutionary steel watch was designed with octagonal bezel secured by eight hexagonal screws. Interestingly, first prototypes were created with white gold as machining high-grade steel to specification provided by Genta was very difficult and expensive at that time. AP chose the name Royal Oak which came from the name of eight vessels of Britain's Royal Navy which in turn took the name from the ancient hollowed oak tree within which King Charles II of England hid to escape the Roundheads, the supporters of the Parliament during English Civil War. Audemars Piguet entered the annals of horological history in 1972 when it overturned all prevailing codes with the Royal Oak, a timepiece beyond compare. A design created by Genta boasting octagonal bezel held by eight hexagonal screws and a dial adorned with a tapestry, guiloki or engine turned pattern and a bracelet integrated into the case. More than being a powerful and sporty design that soon made the Royal Oak an icon 
in the watchmaking history. What sparked off the revolution was introducing steel into the world of horology and raising it to the standards of precious metal at a time when luxury watches were only made of gold. Introduced at the price of 3,300 Swiss francs, this was the price that a steel sport watch had never seen before. This price was higher than gold Patek Philippe dress watches and at that time it was more than 10 times the cost of Rolex Submariner. The message was certainly very daring. You don't need to wear a precious metal watch to show the class and display luxury. Rather, the craftsmanship, excellence of watchmaking and attention to detail are what define the class and prestige. From this point on, it was the design, the precision of execution and the quality of movement that counted, regardless of the fact that the metal that the watch is made of is not precious. When collectors developed this bonding with the watchmaking, the AP Royal Oak became a roaring success. Audemars Piguet built first 1000 watches which are known by collectors as A series now. It took AP more than a year to sell all those watches. These initial 1000 watches are now highly sought after amongst collectors and are easily recognizable because AP initials are placed above 6 o'clock rather than at 12 o'clock. Many chapters of history remain unwritten, but there's a pride that stays with AP. That they are the only watchmaking manufacturer that has remained in the hands of its founding families. And the pieces that come to life today in Audemars Piguet's workshop are made at the very same place where the founding fathers took up tools in 1875 and are crafted by architects and watchmakers of the brand that have had the horological excellence passed down to them from their ancestors across the generations and are the only ones to have cherished knowledge and rare skills which are often no longer taught at horology schools. This concludes part one of my review of Audemars Piguet 15400. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe so that you get the notification when I release the part two of this gorgeous Royal Oak, which will contain the in-depth review of the watch itself with macro shots and closer details of the dial, bracelet and clasp like never seen before on YouTube. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any queries or comments, let me know and I'll be able to respond. And until next time, have a good one.